So how do you, why do we get problems with onboarding? So, um, yeah, BTC Jan is the one that when you need the more complex, multi-jurisdictional, and I'm not an expert, so I have no idea, um, is, is the one that we say, actually, Jan. So why is Gary the time grabber winning the battle for your time? And, and, and onboarding is a lot. And when we first started the club, we meant to set up perhaps ignition. I'm a, a, I'm a new shiny toy junkie. Uh, put up your hand if you're one of those. If there's a shiny toy out there, you want to use it. Yeah, Liz, absolutely, Sarah. Yeah, Claire, Paul, Damien. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you've obviously passed it on to your daughter, Lorna, as well. She's a shiny toy junkie. And I wanted to use it. I wanted to use practice ignition for years. And I kept meaning to. I kept meaning to set it up. I had good intentions, just like this. And it was when it was, I think, the fourth member of the club I was on boarding, and it was taking me two hours to get the proposal and notes written up, the engagement letter signed, the billing set up, set it manually on our systems. I realized I needed something to change fast. It was probably three hours. So for us, it was probably a thousand pounds of lost opportunity costs. Um, yes, Sherry, HubSpot, it's very, very good. If you, if you go beyond the free version of HubSpot, it's very expensive, very, very expensive. Um, and this is why Gary the time grabber is often winning the battle of your time. It's because you have good intentions to sort out your new client onboarding process, but it never, ever happens because there's always something more pressing to do. And, you know, stuff falls through the cracks because you don't have time to review the new client set up on our system and things get missed. You chose a practice management system that doesn't integrate well with other systems. There's lots of manual keying of data. Hands up if you use... Uh, a big one is uh, Digitas uh, Onvio is a big, big one there. And you can't see what you're doing because you cut corners with the number of users on your practice management system. If you've got five people in your practice, buy five licenses. Otherwise, you're already asking yourself for problems. And one of the big thing is maybe you don't introduce the team members who would be working on a day to day basis with a new client quick enough into the client relationship. You know, sometimes we don't set good expectation because we're worried we're going to upset the client. And in fact, one of our members yesterday was like, I want to get rid of this client. They've asked for this extra work. So we quoted high and the client came back and queried the cost and said, this feels really high. And he explained it a bit. And the client says, but do I need that? And the client and he said, look, the price is the price. You don't want it. Go elsewhere. Um, literally, the, go elsewhere. And um, and the, and the client came back and said, all right, then I'll do it. And when I and, and, and the bed was like, damn, I wanted to lose it. But we, we're often not good enough about just standing up to clients when it needs to be done. And this is part of the issue. And you need confidence to do that. Um, so this is some of the typical mistakes. We've already heard about manually rekeying in. Uh, we still see some of this stuff. We still see some of this stuff. Physically sending documents through the post, which need to be printed and signed. That adds, that adds huge amounts of time. If you're anything like my service with Royal Mail, it doesn't arrive half the time. We also see the problem that nobody has an overview or control of the onboarding process. Um, you know, we also see there's a lack of expectation on who does what with a new client. This is the biggest, biggest thing that we see a gap. Um, we see maybe expecting busy client managers to manage all of the onboarding process for their new client. Uh, we see the big one, um, and this one's particularly for you, Paul, Paul T, with uh, my namesake, is that the sales team don't brief the client team fully on what the client wants and needs. It sits with the person that did the call rather than the person that's going to be managing them on a day to day basis. And this is this is the one that probably is the reason. Yeah, Patrick, there are still some accountants that still use the post. We often hear about this from our members going, oh, my goodness get the right word there. Oh my goodness, I can't believe this accountant has physically written to me to ask me this. Linda, I can, I imagine you never use Post in South Africa for similar reasons, that it never arrives or it always gets rifled through. Um, yeah, yeah, some accountants ban email attachments now. No, um, you know, and, and, and there was, there was, I left I literally left one accountancy firm because they always wanted to email me. I told them and I kept telling them for six to nine months, pick up the phone to me, do not hide behind email. But my, my account manager 
did not pick up the phone. She hid behind email and they lost. That was one of the reasons I left. I wanted someone to pick up the phone. And this is what you need to find out in boarding. Are they phone? Are they text? Are they, are they email type people? And actually, we've all realized that we, a lot of us make this mistake because we were thinking of onboarding as the first one to two months, not the first three to six months. It's that key time to focus on wowing the new client, delivering on the promise you gave them in the sales conversation and training them to work a certain way.